Oh God, it's me again. Happy Sunday. So today we're gonna do a pork chop, grilled cabbage, and a Madeira sauce, yeah? Um, I wanna show you, like, you know on Master Chef where, where the presenter's like, and Daisy's making pork chop with cabbage and a Madeira sauce. You know that bit? And like, you watch Master Chef and everyone's got a sauce, but no one fucking teaches you how to make a proper pan sauce. So I'm gonna show you how to make a jus for two. Yeah? You with me? Cool. Let's start off with sauce, because it takes the longest. So I've got a little bit of olive oil. Here, I have five chicken wings. There were chicken wings like this. I split them, each one, into three. There's five chicken wings. The reason we're using chicken wings, chicken wings contain more fat. Um, there's, they're gelatinous, they go sticky. They're delicious. Do this with bones if you want. Um, but I was always taught to use wings because they had the most flavor and they were the cheapest point. Bones aren't gonna give you skin and flavor, but wings will. Um, fried chicken wings chopped into a pan. Now, I just want a tiny bit of seasoning, yeah? Just want a little bit of seasoning. I don't want nothing drastic, but just a little season, you get me? Like this. And then we're just gonna go in with our chicken wings. What we're looking for is we want to cook these wings off with as much color as we can get on them without them being burnt, yeah? We want caramelization, we want the fat in the skin to render, we want all the flavor we can, but we need to remember that this is the base flavor. So if we fuck this, if these are burnt, our whole sauce is gonna be burnt. There's no point in proceeding. You want that deep, beautiful caramel, right? I don't often, I don't often tell you guys times because I don't believe in times, right? You know when a chef's like, oh, and saute the onions for five minutes. Bro, if your five minutes and my five minutes are different, bro. My stove's shit, your stove's not. Do you know what I mean? So I'm gonna take you to the point where they look the way they're supposed to look and that's the way you should be cooking. Don't rely on other people's timings and whatever. Technique, yes, but visually, look, understand, get it to the same point end up with the same end product. Should we talk about base vegetables? Now, when it comes to stocks, we do basic mirepoix, so like the trinity, the things that you should always have in sauces, soups, stocks, whatever. Carrot, celery, onion and leek, those are my four. So, as it's for two people, I've gone two of everything. Two little carrots, the onion, I'm using two little shallots. I've got two baby leeks and two sticks of celery, right? Chopped in a bowl, ready to go. This is all about attention to detail. This is about the most important bit, crucial cooking stages, right? Rendering, building flavor, and making sure shit isn't burnt. Don't turn your back on it. Do this a day in advance, do whatever, right? But make sure that your wings are delicious. When your house starts to smell like roast chicken on a Sunday, we're getting to the right places, yeah? Right, look. Crispy, delicious, brown, caramelized, fat rendered. Look at that. Wait, hold on, let me get a grab of that one. All of our flavor is in our pan. So now from here, all these little chopped vegetables, in they go. Veggies in. Here I've got like a, a mixture of herbs. Um, I thought I had some rosemary. I've got one stick of rosemary, a couple sticks of thyme. Just get that in there as well. Everything contains water, right? Me, George, carrots, onions, leeks, all of it contains water. So now we've got our chicken fat in the bottom of the pan. We've added our vegetables. 
our vegetables have dropped the temperature in the pan, they're releasing their moistures. You need to understand before anything can caramelize, it needs to fuck its water off, yeah? So if you've ever stewed mince and there's all of this water that comes off your mince meat and the recipe tells you to fry, that is not you frying your mince, that's you cooking off the water, you're basically boiling, yeah? So when you add these vegetables to this pan, you're gonna see here, like in this little corner, there's little, bit, little bits of moisture. All things contain moisture, yeah? And we're gonna cook the moisture out. We want char like this. You see this bit of onion here? It's cooked off its moisture, it's starting to caramelize. The word of the day today is caramelize, it's flavor, it's fucking depth. This shit isn't the shit that you read in books and understand. This shit comes from years of practice, but also watching Sunday sessions, you get me? So we got to a point where like, carrots, soft, got color, Things are starting to smell delicious. Everyone's got to meet each other. The time's been like, yo, I'm gonna cover you guys in flavor. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna deglaze the pan. And I like to deglaze with Madeira, from Madeira. Um, sweeter, you could do a red wine, you could do a white wine, you could do whatever. I like to do Madeira. I say, that was one large glass. Hello and welcome back to Brainiac. Um, one large glass of Madeira, right? Gonna cook it all the way off. It flambes, be careful. So we've added, the, we've added the Madeira to catch all the flavors off the bottom of the pan, but also allow everything to like stew for a couple seconds and suck up and evaporate. It's just so that we're left with like a background flavor, but we're also cleaning the pan as we cook to make sure we've got all the flavor. Madeira's cooked down, you can hear it, it's blah, 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 getting to that point where it's all like sticky and sweet on the bottom. I'm going to add chicken stock, so that's 500 ml. We're going to go about a litre of chicken stock. We're going to make sure that the contents of this pan is covered and that everything's sat in chicken stock. Excuse me please dog, excuse me. I'm going to add, I reckon I've got half a packet that can go in. Denzel, piss off, man. It's just dangerously full, isn't it? Everything's covered, it's in that pan, it's gonna come up to the boil, and then we're gonna start to reduce it and build flavor. We'll get into that later. Um, what are we having with our sauce? I hear you screaming. So, we're gonna do cabbage and pork chop. Um, I've got some pointed cabbage, yeah? Imagine this was an entire cabbage. I've cut it and quartered it. Two bits of cabbage. Gonna add a tiny bit of oil. Fucking that comes out quick, doesn't it? Oil, like so. Just gonna rub them so that they're, they get to go in all the little nooks and crannies, right? And then, anything that's going on the grill. A good bit of salt. It, for me, this dish isn't far off like a Sunday roast. I'm not gonna lie. I grew up hating Sunday roasts. I think it was systemic. My dad hated Sunday roasts and that's why we barbecued. So I think that where my dad didn't like Sunday roasts, I was a bit like, fuck it. And also, there's nothing worse than a shit Sunday roast, you know? Sunday roasts, when they're right, are fucking... Oi! Dens, Dens, do not swallow that. Do not swallow that. Come here. You fucking cheeky cut. Cabbage, seasoned. Nice little medium spot on the grill, right? We're gonna lose the outer leaves. There's, some of these leaves are gonna cook to fucking shit and you won't be able to eat them. So when you do portion your cabbage, try not to take off all the leaves that look ropey. Leave them on, they're your lifesaver. They're gonna save your bum when it's squeaky bum time, yeah? So, cabbage is down, cool spot. In here, got a little bit of butter melting. It's like three tablespoons and I've got some herbs, yeah? Gonna leave the herbs there one second, just while I turn this cabbage. Now look. I told you our cabbage is going to have a nice char, right? 
it's a, a big vegetable cabbage, right? It's got loads of layers. So although that looks like it's cooked and it's delicious, it's not. It's going to need a little bit longer. We want the root here to be soft and edible and chewy and crunchy. So they're going to cook for a little while. But now, as they cook, every so often, I'm just going to baste in buttery, herby deliciousness, right? And we're going to do this through the entire cook. That's just the butter hitting the charcoal. No big deal. Move to another spot. So the idea, what I like to do, right, is to get colour on this side, colour on that side, and then cook them that way, right? So that I'm no longer building colour, but they're allowed to heat through, and the butter's still going to touch the charcoal, and it's going to seep through all the layers and be delicious. Once you've got your desired colour on one side, Turn them over, let these outer leaves burn, but they, as they burn, they're steaming and cooking our cabbage from the outside in, right? So we're gonna build our color first. been about, I don't know, 40 minutes. Cabbage is nice and wilted. The stalks come down to like this delicious, slippery, watery liquid. Um, and we're gonna strain, right? So, this doesn't look like we've got much stock, but where there's volume in the pan, it doesn't look like we've got loads. So we're gonna strain it and then reduce it to our desired consistency. Uh, this is one of those new bags that they give you in the like Sainsbury's instead of using a recycling bag, which I'm using as a J-cloth, um, just to filter through into here and let our liquid sieve through. Give it a nice little squash. Get all the flavors out. If, if we drain, sieve this really quickly and then threw it away, we'd still have like excess moisture on our wings and on our vegetables. So I'm just gonna poke it just to make sure that we're not losing anything. We spent all that time reducing it and it basically comes down to very little. So you need to treat this shit like fucking gold, bruv. Like it's the most important thing in it. We're left with this beautiful, this isn't even a jus yet. This is just like all of our chicken stock and our flavors. We've already got a nice color on it. It's almost thick. If you didn't want to take this to a jus now, this is your gravy. You add a roux to it, which is butter and flour. You thicken it, gravy done. But we want to go jus. I want the stickiness. I want like the lip. I want it to be like a lip gloss when I eat it. So I'm going to hold on to this. Cabbage is done. We're going to move on to our pork chop. So couple beautiful rare breed pork chops from the local butchers. Not doing anything to these except for seasoning. I want it to be like a roast dinner. I want it to have the, the meat sing, the sauce sing, the cabbage sing, everything independent. Don't want anything too overpowering, all right? So nice bit of salt. Make sure you get the rib bone as well. These have come up to room temp, so they'll cook nice and fast. And I know I say a lot, oh, I don't use pepper on the barbecue, but I want to cook these low and slow. So I'm going to give them a little crack of pepper. Where we're cooking low and slow, it means that the pepper's not going to burn straight away, right? It's just going to sit, sweat, do its thing and be delicious. I need a little bit of lubrication because they won't, don't want to cook them dry. We want to build caramelization and color. two beautifully seasoned pork chops that we're now going to stick on the grill. I'm just going to give my charcoal a little knockabout, just where it's covered in ash. I just want it to be a nice, consistent hot. We're at about a three count. Nothing major, low and slow. 
And we're just going to get these pork chops on. Slow, caramel, delicious, autumnal browns is what you're looking for. All the autumn colours. That one's not autumn yet. That one's still like early winter. We want nice and autumnal. I might even put this on here just to make sure that it's flat. Beautiful. Cabbage is just sat here doing its thing, waiting for us to eat it. Every so often, just give it a little bit of attention, a little bit of a baste with a herb brush. Are you autumnal yet? Yeah. Bloody autumn. Right, so we've got a beautiful colour on both sides of our pork chop, right? Beautiful, look at that, ow! But we've got no colour on our fat, so I'm just going to use our little pot with, that you used to have butter in, just to prop these pork chops up and just let them render slowly. We want to render all that fat out so we've got crispy fat whilst we're eating, we've got some nice texture. Pork is cooked, rendered. I'm gonna let it rest in a nice little bowl. Let it sit and do its thing. We're gonna bring the cabbage over to the chopping board and garnish and then get everything on the plate and make shit delicious. Pork's resting. Let's garnish this cabbage quickly. So, I didn't mention at the top of the segment, is that what they say? I didn't mention at the top of the show that we were using anchovies on this beautiful piece of cabbage that we've grilled. Um, I've got these really nice anchovies. I feel like anchovies, sauce, pork, cabbage, all go really well together. Um, so I'm just going to take an anchovy out and split it. And just lay it across this bit of cabbage. It's going to be like salty, delicious, umami. And here I've got some chives. Nice and thin. Sprinkle that over the top. So now we've got salty, we've got oniony. I'm gonna crack on a little black pepper, a little bit of extra salt, and then a strike of some lemon, right? So now we've got like salty, peppery, savouriness from cabbage, Little like backgrounds of anchovy, vibrancy from acid. Let's get that bad boy on a plate. We've got all of this little, this is what we've amounted to, this little bit of sauce, right? It's not loads. Now you have to reduce this sauce in a wide pan. The wider the pan, the more surface area, the quicker it comes down. The only problem is with reducing in a wide pan is it can go from sauce or jus to sticky and gone in seconds. So we have to look after it, right? So I'm going to get this on. It's not far already. Look, it's not far. There's a luxuriness to it. There's silkiness. We just want to come down ever so slightly. We want a darker, a darker brown and we want it to coat the spoon. So look, we're not far. Let's get it on. I'm washing it out of the corner of my eye. There's a little blip and bubble happening over here, which gives me enough time to carve my pork chop. So, rested, good bounce. Let's 
a beautiful medium rare right this. Which way is let's go this way. Beautiful, juicy, juicy pork chop. Look, not even squeezing. It's all about resting. Come on, off you come. There it is. All about resting. It's fucking so important. So that can go on the plate alongside our cabbage. Look at beautiful bits of pork. So look, we've got like a slow swell now. We can see that the sauce has bubbled up and thickened. Like you can see the way it drips off the spoon. Jammy, delicious, rich, full of flavor. This is all of the chicken bones, the Madeira, the stock, has all come down to make this like impactful bit of sauce, yeah? Let's pour this on. Beautiful. Fucking slippery, deep. Some call it jus, others call it greve. Fuck it, we'll block a bit on the bloody cabbage as well. Fuck it. Oh. Do you really want it? It's like a mixture of resting juices, jus. Mm. Got a nice crunchy bit of cabbage. That's what I like. I like that the, the root's still a bit al dente and some of the leaves have gone darker than the other. Some are sweet, some are bitter. And it keeps your palate it it keeps your palate excited. But yeah, I think this could be like an alternative Sunday roast recipe. If you got served this, a couple of potatoes, a Yorkshire pudding, and a glass of red wine, you'd be laughing. The sauce is just so fucking delicious. Coats your mouth, it's rich with Madeira, there's like a little sweetness. It's just the kind of gravy you want, man. It's sticky, but it just brings everything together. There's depth in our, in our Madeira sauce. It's almost like on the cusp of being bitter. There's a few bitter leaves on our cabbage. There's like pops of like vibrancy from lemon zest, saltiness from anchovy. For me, it's just one of those bites that it all makes sense. It all has every right to be on the dish. There's no fucking putting things on just because they look cool. I don't want crispy onions. Also, can I add that sauce, beef, chicken, any other animal, vegetables um, is great for. Don't just think this is a pork sauce. If you don't eat pork, feel free to do this dish with beef. It works the same way. And if you can't barbecue your cabbage, use a charring, what are those fucking shit pans called? Use a griddle pan to char your cabbage, roast it in the oven, garnish it the same way, you'll get similar results. But I quite like the, the smokiness and like these crispy bits of texture that you get off the cabbage. But yeah, man, alternative Sunday roast, I think we should call this one.
Chop House Films. Can you say films? Film. Films. Films.